In the name of the Father, and the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching Him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we poor sinners confess unto you that we are by nature sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you by thought, word, and deed. Wherefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy, seeking and imploring your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. O oh, most merciful God, who has given your only begotten Son to die for us, have mercy upon us, and for his sake grant us remission of all our sins. And by your Holy Spirit, increase in us true knowledge of you and of your will, in true obedience to your word, to the end that by your grace we may come to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon us and has given his only Son to die for us and for his sake forgives us all our sins. To those who believe on his name, he gives power to become the children of God and has promised them his Holy Spirit. He that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Grant this, Lord, unto us all. We speak responsibly the introit found on your service bulletin. Rejoice in the Lord always. And I will say rejoice. Blessed is he who, whose help is the God of Jacob. Who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. Who executes justice for the oppressed. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bad down. The Lord loves the in the Lord always. found in your service bulletin. Lord Jesus Christ, we implore you to hear our prayers and to lighten the darkness of our hearts by your gracious visitation. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Testament reading comes from the book of Zephaniah, the third chapter, 14 through 20. Sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord has taken away the judgments against you and has cleared away your enemies. The King of Israel, the Lord, is in your midst. You shall never again fear evil. 
On that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exult over you with loud singing. I will gather those of you who mourn for the festival so that you will no longer suffer reproach. Behold, at that time I will deal with all your oppressors, and I will save the lame and gather the outcast, and I will change your shame into praise and renown in all the earth. At that time I will bring you in, and at the time when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised amongst all the peoples of the earth when I restore your for fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Behold, your king is coming to you. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. The epistle reading comes from Philippians, the fourth chapter. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Stand for the reading of the gospel. According to St. Luke, 7th chapter. The disciples of John reported all, reported all these things to him. And John, calling two of his disciples to him, sent them to the Lord, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? And when the men had come to him, they said, John the Baptist has sent us to you, saying, Are you the one who is to come, or shall we look for another? In that hour he healed many people of diseases and plagues and evil spirits, and on many who were blind he bestowed sight. And he answered them, Go and tell John what you have seen and heard. The blind receive their sight, the lame walk, lepers are cleansed, and the deaf hear, the dead are raised up, the poor have good news preached to them. And blessed is the one who is not offended by me. When John's messengers had gone, Jesus began to speak to the crowds concerning John. What did you go out into the wilderness to see? A reed shaken by the wind? What then did you go out to see? A man dressed in soft clothing? Behold, those who are dressed in splendid clothing and live in luxury are in king's courts. What then did you go out to see? A prophet? Yes, I tell you, and more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written. Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way before you. I tell you, among those born of women, none is greater than John. Yet the one who is, the least, who is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. This is the gospel of the Lord. together the words of the Apostles Creed found on page 192 I believe in God the Father Almighty maker of heaven and earth and in Jesus Christ his only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell the third day he rose again from the dead, ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. 
From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated and we will sing our hymn of the day, Hark, a Thrilling Voice is Sounding, number 345. May God's grace, mercy, and peace, peace be with you now and forever. Our sermon today is written on the sermon text from the book of Zephaniah, third chapter, read a moment ago. Please be seated. So bear with me, please. I only read through this one time. That's all the time I had, I had to read through it. So uh, this was prepared by Pastor Wolf, so we'll, uh, we'll read what he has prepared. About 2,000 years before Christ Jesus was born, Job wrote, Naked I came from my mother's womb, and naked shall I return. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin or charge God with wrong. Then about 1,000 years before Christ Jesus was born, God's prophet Zephaniah humbly, dutifully, and joyfully reminded God's people that their relationship with God was actually God's relationship with them. Like God's prophet Job had said long before him, Zephaniah repeated God's joyful wisdom that God lovingly did all the doing of creating and restoring his relationship of love with mankind and particularly with his believers. So who are we to sin against God by sitting in judgment of God and thus charging God with doing wrong. We are the disobedient sinners who rebel against God, so we are disqualified from looking down our noses against God and faithlessly questioning his actions. But Job and Zephaniah and all of God's prophets and apostles are in perfect harmony with Job in telling you and me today that God is always good and right and gracious and merciful in giving us things and in taking things from us, always. That's God's favorite thing to do to you and me and all mankind because he favors us. He's always favored us. He will always 
favor us. He always favor us, favors us because that's just the way God is. He always favors us because that's who God is. He is pure favor. He is pure and perfect love. He favored us by creating us perfectly holy and sin-free. When Adam and Eve, with the help of the devil, created sin, God sent his only son, Jesus Christ, to take it away. Because he favored mankind so much that he didn't want anyone to die in their sin, and thus knowing eternal death as hell. You and I are not that way. We're not pure and perfect favor and love. We cannot understand that. So Jesus Christ is an annoying mystery we can't wrap our head around, and we can't classify and categorize in our insufficient brains that therefore favor our own selves and our own intelligence. But here comes Jesus again through his prophets and apostles in his word, including in today's text, telling us that he gives us these things to us and takes things from us, all because he favors us so much, even while we continually favor ourselves and our own intelligence so much. Sing aloud, shout, rejoice, and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. Jesus says to you and me today through Zephaniah in verse 14, whoop it up like you've never whooped it up before. Why? Because the Lord has taken away the judgments against you. He has cleared away your enemies. You shall never again fear evil. Jesus tells us through Zephaniah in verse 15. Whether you realize it or not, and whether you agree or not, God the Son has once again shown his pure love and perfect favor from his bloody Good Friday cross. That has taken away all of the damning and deadly power and guilt of your sinful, disobedient questioning and judgment you've rendered to God the Father. On that day when you sinfully sit in judgment of God, however many days that may be, on that day it shall be said to Jerusalem, Fear not, O Zion, let not your hands grow weak. The Lord your God is in your midst, a mighty one who will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will quiet you by his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. We read about in verses 16 and 17. Imagine that. Christ Jesus, the Son of God, is in the midst, the middle of your life, my life, dispelling and destroying all our fear for all the consequences of our sinful judgment of God. Jesus has taken all of our fear away. And what's he giving into us instead? He's giving his salvation. He brought with his sin, bought with his sin-free lifeblood on his cross. He's quieting you by his love. Just like you would your own child who just awoke from a nightmare. It's okay. That's not real. You would tell your child because you favor them and because it's true. So you favor them so much that you want them to know it's true. You want them to know there's no cause for tears or fear. Christ Jesus wants each and every single one of you here and there to know for sure and for certain that on his bloody cross on Mount Calvary, he took away the fearful, deadly, and damning power and guilt of all the monsters, all of your sin, against him. He favors each and every single one of you so much that he's replaced your fearful tears over your sin by which you have judged yourself guilty of death and hell. With his gift of his own blood, bought righteousness that God the Father has joyfully accepted, and therefore joyfully declared you just as if you'd never disobeyed him at all. That's what Jesus is telling you through Zephaniah in verse 20, on how he just keeps on showing you his unlimited and unending favor that will joyfully take you away from his sinful life in this sinful world into his heaven one day when he alone knows that time is right. Things will be different then for you. He says so in verse 20. 
At that time, I will bring you in, and at that time, when I gather you together, for I will make you renowned and praised among all the peoples of the earth when I restore your fortunes before your eyes, says the Lord. Your most glorious obituary won't begin to compare with the praise Jesus Christ will heap upon you before God the Father when he presents you before God the Father's throne in heaven. You'll see it before your eyes. Jesus has Zephaniah tell you in verse 20. You'll be seeing heaven where Jesus will have restored your fortune of being directly and personally, perfectly and purely in God's holy and righteous presence. And that is, by far, your greatest fortune. It's given into you in the faith God the, Father, God the Holy Spirit created into you in his sacrament of holy baptism by the power of Christ Jesus' word. So, in spite of all your sinful judgments of God and all your sinful disobedience, you are a supremely fortunate person in God's life. And your fortune awaits you in Jesus Christ's heaven because he favors you all so much. He favors you so much that he has given you forgiveness, eternal life, and salvation, and taken away all the reality and existence of your sinful disobedience that would keep you out of his presence with him in his heaven. Praise God from whom all blessings of Jesus Christ, unlimited and unending favor from his cross, flow into you by his grace and mercy. Amen. Please rise for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly come before you, lifting up those who are sick, those who are have lost loved ones that they care dearly about. We pray for all those that we name. We pray for the family and friends of Reverend Julius Clausen, the family and friends of Sharon Smith, the family and friends of Rick Reynolds, the family and friends of Bud Wolf, the family and friends of Sue Wolf. We pray for Sarah and Jim and Drew and Kathy, Mike and Eric, Edna, Pastor Ziegler, Agnes Keenoff, Mark and 
John, Nakia, Pastor Wolf. We pray for Richard, and Gavin, and Emily, and Gary, and Ken, and Vanessa, and Kenley, and Reverend Marty Reed. We pray for our shut-ins, Father, Liz, Anna. We pray for our military members, Jesse, Jake, Chaplain Cody Norton, Cooper, and Michael. Lord, we pray for all those and also those that we have in our hearts and in our minds. We pray that you give them what they need, peace, comfort, healing. Lord, we ask all these humbly in your presence, and we pray the prayer you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us for an evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. You may be seated for our closing hymn, When All the World Was Cursed, number 346. Again, there will be no midweek Advent service this Wednesday. Uh, Christmas Eve service will be at 6.30.
And he has in there Christmas Day divine service will be at 1030. Um, I think that time is correct. I'm not. We'll confirm that next week. Um, any other announcements? Uh, yep. I'm going to buy poinsettias this week because we'll meet them here next week. That will be the last Sunday before Christmas. We have $90 in the flower fund. We're going to use that. If you want to take them home, you can give us $5. Or, or if you have, you want to give me some more money now, I'll put it for our permit. I'll get what I can for $90 otherwise. So I'll have those here next Sunday. If anybody has seen really good ones, let me know. I found some for $4.97 at Walmart in Atchison. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll look at Lowe's too. But anyway, I'll have them here Sunday. So if you want something specific, let me know. Okay, did everybody hear that all right? All right, anything else?